Good to connect with you again. This week we're taking a break from the, the stuff that we've been looking at in the past few weeks. You remember that we've been doing a series called Your Will Be Done, looking at some fairly big, big topics. Um, and we're, we're just going to put that on pause for this week and we're going to be thinking about harvest and the theme of gratitude and thankfulness towards God. So that's going to be our focus. And we're going to be focusing on that in church as well. For those of you who are able to make it to our in-person services, that's what we're going to be thinking about. And we'll be taking a couple of collections. So if you haven't been able to, to make it to church, there's still an opportunity to do um, a drop for those collections at SJ's. And that can be done on Monday or Friday. I think, yes, that's right, between 10 and 12. Um, and we're doing two collections. One is for the Bromley Food Bank. And I think currently they're after the sort of things like uh, UHT milk, tinned cold meat, tinned salmon, deodorant, razors and shaving foam, and any household cleaning products like sprays and bleach and cleaning cloths, that sort of stuff. That's for the Bromley Food Bank, um, but we're also taking a collection for the Refugee Day Centre in Croydon, and particularly for thinking about refugees from Afghanistan. And there are after all sorts of things like good quality coats, hats, gloves and shoes, shoes on the shoes front, especially trainers uh, for men, women and children. Underwear, again, for men, women and children and, and any any decent clean clothes that are sort of in good condition, um, but particularly for men on that front um, and children. Uh, and I think one last thing that they may be after as well is things like colouring books and crayons for, for kids. So if you want to make a drop of any of those things, you can do that at SJ's, like I said, on a Monday or a Friday between 10 and 12. And that'd be much appreciated, I'm sure. Back to this morning and thinking about our theme of thankfulness. I don't know if you've ever come across this book. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know whether it comes out backwards when you're videoing like this, but it's, it's called 1000 Gifts. It's by a woman called Anne Voskamp. I don't know who that was, we'll just continue, by, by Anne Voskamp. Um, and it's, it's, it's beautifully written, and it's just a really, really uh, great exploration of what does it mean to find gratitude, uh, to give thanks to God in our everyday stuff. Um, and there's one of the chapters that begins with a quote from, check this name out, Sarah Van Brethnak, that's quite a name, and, and she's, she, it's a beautiful quote, let me just read it to you. It goes, gratitude bestows reverence, allowing us to encounter everyday epiphanies, those transcendent moments of awe that change forever how we experience life and the world. That's just quite a flowery way of saying, actually, if we learn to develop the habit of saying thank you to God in our everyday, possibly mundane moments, then there's the opportunity for his grace to break in and for us to experience the everyday in, in a new and revitalized way. And, and that's partly what we think about and contemplate during harvest. So just as we begin, before I hand over to Penny, he's gonna do our reading and, and, then, and then speak to us. I'm just gonna just pray for us together. So let's, let's be still, uh, direct our hearts towards God and, and express gratitude. Father God, whatever our week has held, we, we know that you're good, we know that you love us, and we know that you want us to experience that goodness and that love. And so we say thank you to you now. And we pray that you do help us to develop that habit of, of finding things to just say thank you to you for in our everyday. And just may that radically alter the way we see everything that we do. May nothing be too ordinary or mundane when it's seen through your eyes. So speak to us now this morning, we pray, for your glory's sake. Amen. Like I said, over to Penny now. She's going to read from Ephesians 3, um, and then she's going to speak to us. Um, just a, a little brief harvest message. The reading today is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 12 to 21. Because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. 
So don't, please don't lose heart because of my trials here. I'm suffering for you, so you should feel honoured. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus, through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning everyone, my name's Penny and welcome to our Harvest Sunday celebration. I'm going to just speak very briefly on a very favourite passage that I've got from Ephesians, the letter Paul to the Ephesians. Because I, I love this one, it's, just, it's the reading you've just heard and it's just full of beautiful promises from God. And it does tie in with harvest because it's talking about putting our roots deep into God's glorious love and how this affects our lives and how we can actually reach out to other people. It ties in with the idea that Jesus used of seeds being implanted in bad ground or weedy ground or stony ground that doesn't give enough feed to the plants and they don't survive, they don't come, they don't, they're not, not good crops. And we have to choose what we plant our roots in. We have got choices. We can choose to trust God. We can choose to spend time with him. We can choose to learn more about what he says in the Bible. We can choose to listen to people talking about him, read about him, read more, in the, read more of the Bible, read more of the books, whatever. But we just need to make sure that we find out as much about his thinking, his way, and let him actually live in us by his spirit. And I've, what I've done just to help us a little bit, I've put this lovely white rose in some blue dye. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it, the blue has come up. And if, if that can happen to this rose, it's taken it in, up, up to its stem and into the leaves. See, that's quite a good picture of what happens with us. If we steep ourselves in God's love and his word, then we will become more like him. We will be able to share him through our lives with other people. We'll be able to have that peace and love and joy. And we'll have that reassurance that whatever happens in this world, actually, ultimately, he's in control. We need to play our part in looking after our world. But we also can trust him ultimately to take care of things through us, through the governments, through all sorts of ways. But also he has power over so much of the climate and the way things grow. And he's got wonderful ways, wonderful systems of you know plants adapting all sorts of things so we actually do need to just have that assurance i think so many people are very scared these days about the future but we can trust in him because he cares so much about us it says in this passage he, he you know that he cares much more than we can ever possibly imagine his love for us is something that we cannot imagine and that is true for everybody in this world 
what is different is whether we choose to trust him with it and whether, whether to follow him. So I just think it would be really good this harvest time for us to remember that. Think about the roots of the plants. Think about the effect of good things going up into it. Think about what we're taking into our lives and really be grateful for the things that he gives us each day. And we thank him at harvest especially for what he gives us in our food, in our clothing. And we think about the people who are suffering at the moment who haven't got food and clothing. And we're helping them with the stuff that we give for harvest this year. And we just need to give thanks day in and day out. Find and remember all that he does for us and all that he's done for us in giving himself for us. So I just wish you a really happy harvest. And just remember to do anything you can to put your roots down into his glorious love and trust him for now and for the future. Amen. Appreciate that that's a short service this morning, but I hope that it has been tonic for your soul. And as you go into this week, I also too pray that you're able to uh, learn and express that, that gratitude to God for, for everything, the little things and the not so little things. Um, can't sign off without mentioning the fact that this is Amber's, our family's bucket. It's her last Sunday and we're making a goodbye to her in church. And thank you for all the, the contributions that you've made towards a goodbye gift for her. That, that's been really appreciated and 
look forward to handing that over to her um, on Sunday. Um, but do pray for her. Pray for her and Chris as they as they prepare for a wedding day, as they think about moving to a new house, finding new jobs, all that stuff that comes with sort of big landmark life moments. Um, so continue to hold them in your prayers. And one final thing is that our Alpha course, our online Alpha course, starts on Thursday. So it's not too late, too late, I should say, to sign up. So you can jump onto our website. There's a really obvious link there that en enables you to sign up and put your name down if you want to be part of that um, and explore just the basics of the Christian faith. But let me send you on your way with God's blessing. So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all and those you love and care for now and always. Amen. Take care one and all.